A female stoplight parrotfish changes gender, becoming a super male. And the male sergeant major invites females to contribute eggs to his nest by turning blue. This goatfish settles in a cleaning station and camouflage colors appear on its back. Color change in fish is relatively slow because their pigment cells are controlled through hormones. Among skin talkers, the clear champions are the cuttlefish, the squid, and the octopus. The color producing structures in the skin of cephalopods are organized in three layers beneath the glass-like epidermis. At the deepest layer are broadband reflectors that appear pale or white. Above them in the skin are stacks of crystals that refract light and produce shimmering blues and green. In the topmost layer, chromatophores contain sacs of pigment grains, positioned precisely in relation to the underlying reflectors. The chromatophores have sets of muscles that pull radially, stretching the pigment sac so the color covers more area. Special lobes in the brain directly control the chromatophore muscles. Chromatophore pigments range from yellow through red and brown to black. Chromatophores can be controlled in precise groupings to mask a pale structure or to emphasize it by darkening adjacent skin. Octopus and cuttlefish live near the sea floor. Their skin can do this. Tiny muscles that surround folds of skin can be quickly contracted to raise elaborate corrugations. Cephalopods add a third component beyond skin color and skin texture, a language of tentacle signs. This gesture, center arms raised, is thought to be defensive. Biologists have given other known gestures names such as drooping arm, flanged fin, wrinkled first arms, and extended fourth arm. The fourth component, which makes these abilities so powerful, is the cephalopod's very capable vision. Their eyes are very similar to the eyes of mammals, though they focus by moving the lens rather than changing its shape. Also, their light sensors point toward the lens, producing a very sensitive retina with no blind spot. As in many nocturnal animals, the pupil is square, which works better than a round pupil for very light-sensitive eyes. Though they are very acute detectors of contrast and pattern, cephalopods don't have color vision. In the somewhat monochromatic light of their seafloor habitat, polarization, which they do perceive, is better for identifying prey. This male Caribbean reef squid flickers to signal his desire to mate. 
the female isn't responding with the saddle pattern that would encourage. Dark arms and zebra stripes signal to a rival male. Bilateral control allows the female cuttlefish to display an invitation to her chosen mate while showing camouflage on the opposite side. Disruptive coloration is not an attempt to blend in but rather a technique that breaks up the outline in surprising ways and confuses the predator. The ability to match ambient light allows squid to vanish in the midwater. Veined or coconut octopus armors itself in fragments of shell held strongly by the suckers of its eight arms. Cephalopods that live here and can hide in the sand may have less need of camouflage. Wonderpus can hide its brilliant patterning, or it can use it to simulate a sea snake. The flamboyant cuttlefish can go almost unnoticed in its brown coloration. Its hunting tentacles are masked from the prey by dark tips. When he feels threatened, he can flash vivid warning colors.
The life of a cephalopod commonly ends soon after mating. In a final dance, squid prepare and place their eggs. More than a month she has tended her eggs under the sand. Now her brood swims free. Many cuttlefish carefully attach their eggs within the coral. The male passes the female a sealed packet of sperm. She fertilizes each egg as she removes it from her mantle cavity. <laughs> <laughs> 